Hi, my name's Rosa and I'm from Ains Corp. We distribute salts ostomy products throughout Australia and New Zealand. And this is part three of our stoma education series. And it's focused on living with a stoma. So what happens after we come home from the hospital after our surgery and get back to normal everyday life. So before leaving hospital, your stomal therapist will provide education on how to care for your stoma. You will be discharged once your stomal therapist is confident that you and all your carers or family members will be able to care for your stoma at home. This is a period of transition and the hospital will arrange follow up care for you following discharge and make sure that you're not just left on your own to deal with your stoma at home. They will ensure that you have care checking on you to see that you're coping with life with a stoma. You can always contact the stomal therapist who cared for you in hospital or refer to the websites below for a list of all stomal therapists in Australia and New Zealand. In Australia, you can find all the stomal therapists listed at www.stomaltherapy.com and in New Zealand, all the stomal therapists are listed at www.ostomy.org.nz. So after you've been discharged from the hospital, you will still need to have some time to recover at home. You will likely feel tired and find everyday tasks to be exhausting. And this is quite normal after most surgeries. You will need plenty of rest and you should make time for naps during the day if you find that you need them. Your abdomen may be sore and swollen, but if you're in a lot of pain, you should talk to your stomal therapist or your surgeon or your GP and potentially loose clothing could also help make things a little bit more comfortable around your surgical site. If you do have things that you need to do, try and spread them over the day to avoid overworking yourself. And remember, you are more likely to become tired as the day progresses. So maybe if you have things to do, try and get them done in the morning if you need to, and then give yourself some time to rest as the day goes on. It's important to avoid lifting, twisting or reaching while recovering. And a really good tip to you know, know what we should and shouldn't pick up is to avoid lifting anything heavier than a half full kettle. So really not much, we need to take it easy so we protect that healing abdomen and make sure we don't move any stitches or healing that's going on there by lifting things that are too heavy. It's not recommended that you drive in the early days after your surgery and you should be ready and confident after about three to six weeks but it's always best to check with your insurance provider as they often have time limits for when you can be covered after you've had surgery. So once we're back at home, we need to make sure that we have enough stoma supplies to care for our stoma. And we're very lucky in both Australia and New Zealand that we have a government funded scheme to provide all the ostomy products that we need. In Australia, you will be signed up to an ostomy association by your stoma nurse and the ostomy association are the ones who claim the cost of the products through Medicare to the government. To get your products through an ostomy association, you do have to be a member and there is a small membership fee each year. Your stomal therapy nurse will cover all of this with you and help you place your first order and guide you in how to place these orders going forward. When your stomal therapy nurse discharges you from the hospital, they will give you a small supply of pouches and equipment that you may need until your first order arrives to meet you at home. In New Zealand, your stoma nurse will arrange all of your products for you and will put in your first order and will also give you a small supply to cover you until that first order arrives at home. So it's very important to discuss any kind of medication that you're on with your GP or your surgeon or your stomal therapy nurse, as having a stoma doesn't exclude you from the same possible side effects from any medications. However, when we have a stoma, different medications can have different effects on things that we, did, we may not have been aware of before we had a stoma. So things like some antibiotics can change your output consistency, Things like iron tablets can cause a black and sticky output. But despite these side effects, it's still important to stick to your prescribed medications once you're home. And then if you have any concerns, talk about them with your GP or your surgeon. 
It's important to know that medications that are in capsules, enteric coated or slow release may not be absorbed in your small bowel, meaning they may be ineffective. So this is a really important reason to discuss all our medications with your GP and your surgeon. An important thing to talk about once we have a stoma is our diet. And some people may find that they have no changes in their gastrointestinal system and they can eat anything that they did before. Others may find certain foods don't agree with them anymore after their surgery. But here are some tips that we can give you after your stoma surgery for your diet. It can be helpful to eat small meals quite often to regulate the output from your stoma. And note that certain foods may change the consistency of your output. Therefore, it's a really important factor when managing your new stoma. In the early days, it is important to increase your intake of calories, fat and protein. And in addition to your normal diet, really make sure that you include things like fruit and vegetables every day and really high protein foods such as meat, fish and eggs. Things like carbohydrates with every meal, bread, potatoes, pasta or rice and milk or dairy two or three times a day to include calcium. As I mentioned before, it's a good thing to experiment with foods in small amounts and increase quantities if there are no problems. However, you know yourself best and you'll start to get an idea of what works with your stoma and what doesn't work and things maybe we have to avoid. So a really important factor that we all need to take note of is dehydration and we need to be able to recognise the signs and symptoms, especially when we have a stoma. So dehydration is when we have a greater loss of body fluids, like water, compared to how much we're putting into our body. Signs of dehydration include things like increased thirst, dry mouth, you might feel weak, tired or have a headache, and you might notice your urine is quite dark coloured. So if you have a urostomy, take note of the colour of the urine in your stoma bag. Or if you have an ileostomy or a colostomy, take note of how often you're going to urinate. You might be going a little bit less than normal and that might be a sign or a signal that you're dehydrated. If you do have an ileostomy or a colostomy, you might have quite a loosened output depending on the type of your stoma or what's going on with your body. And if you have quite a loose output that you're having to empty quite frequently, this means we might get a bit dehydrated. And that's because we're having a lot of fluid come out of our body with the output into that pouch. And we need to make sure that that's being replaced. So ideally, we're having six to eight glasses a day of water to help maintain that hydration. But this depends on a variety of things. So minimum six to eight glasses of water a day, but more if we have that loose high output with an ileostomy or colostomy, more if the weather is really hot and we're sweating a lot, more if you're doing a lot of exercise and you're sweating a lot, um, more if it's even just quite humid. So take note of the signs and symptoms, what's going on in your environment, what's going on in that day, and make sure you're drinking enough. You can also incorporate fluid in foods to make sure we're getting enough water. Things like soups, grapes and strawberries, tomatoes, watermelon and cucumber and zucchini are all really good sources of fluid in foods. If you are experiencing any dehydration symptoms, you can also incorporate the following into your diet. Things like quite salty foods, so Vegemite on toast, salted chips, full sugar fizzy drinks that have been allowed to go flat first, and we'll go into why on the next slide, and things like isotonic sports drinks, so things like Gatorade and Powerade. You can also use things like the chemist dehydration salts, so things like Hydrolyte. However, you don't have to go to the chemist and grab the products from there. You can actually create a rehydration recipe at home using things that you've already got in your cupboard. So in one litre of water, you can put six level teaspoons of sugar or glucose, half a teaspoon of salt and half a teaspoon of sodium bicarbonate, 
mix that all up in your litre of water and you've got a great rehydration salts recipe at home that's easy to make if you notice that you're dehydrated. So when we have a stoma, it's really important to chew all your foods really well as there are certain foods that can swell up and potentially cause a blockage of your stoma and affect the output into your pouch. The following foods are known to risk blockages. Things like nuts, coconut, mushrooms and raw fruit skins. And symptoms of a blockage can include things like your output may decrease, you might have some pain, you might feel or you might even be sick and your abdomen may swell. And if you have a blockage or suspect you may have a blockage, it's best to get this seen to as soon as possible. There are also certain foods that can increase the chances of experiencing wind, such as cabbage, beans and lentils, cauliflower, spicy foods, onions and fizzy drinks. A good rule of thumb is that if something caused a lot of wind for you before your stoma, it's likely to still cause a bit of wind for you with your stoma. So some tips to reduce wind include avoid talking or drinking while you're eating, avoid using a straw when you're drinking, try things like peppermint drinks and things like cordial or tea, eat regularly and avoid gaps between meals like long gaps of time so don't leave hours and hours and hours make sure to eat much more regularly allow your fizzy drinks to go a bit flat and make sure to keep mobile so your digestive system keeps moving now let's talk exercise in hospital a physiotherapist will guide you through exercises to help support you in particular around actions like coughing because these may potentially hurt after surgery. The best exercise post-surgery will be walking. And keeping mobile is so important, but set realistic goals that gradually increase as you get stronger. So don't expect that if you were really, really energetic and did a lot of exercise right before your surgery, you're going to bounce back to that straight after your surgery. It is a big surgery and your body needs time to recover and gradually increase back to that activity level. If it does feel like too much, it's too tiring or it's too painful, don't do it. Just give your body a chance to relax and heal itself. Strengthening your abdominal muscles is quite beneficial for general recovery and activities like swimming, walking, yoga and Pilates will help all of this. But again, be mindful to not go over your limits and stop if it hurts. A support belt can be helpful and is often recommended to support your reintroduction to exercise as it helps prevent a hernia forming around your stoma, which happens because we have weakened those abdominal muscles through the surgery. One of the most common questions we hear is, can I go swimming with a stoma? And the answer is, you absolutely can. Your pouch will stay secure during swimming. And when the pouches get wet, the adhesive that sticks your pouch to your skin actually becomes even more tacky and sticks even better. So when you're changing your pouch after swimming, it will be easier if you let it dry, let that water dry out from the pouch. So wait a couple of minutes and the adhesive should return to normal and you should be able to change the pouch as you normally would. Chlorine and salt does tend to dry out the adhesive a little bit more. So you may need to change your pouch more frequently. The type of swimwear you wear is dependent completely on personal preference. And if you're happy with wearing a bikini or speedos with your stoma pouch, absolutely go for it. Otherwise there are swimsuits with a lining or a double layer fabric, which will support your abdomen and hide the pouch. So completely up to you what you'd prefer. So we've talked quite a bit about the practicalities of living with a stoma, but we also need to think about our emotional changes as well, as learning to cope with your stoma emotionally as well as practically won't just happen overnight. And you might go through periods of sadness and grief for your life before a stoma, but it is okay to feel these emotions and to let them surface and not just hide them away. 
It will be really helpful to talk about these feelings with anyone you feel comfortable with, whether that's your family, your friends, and or your stomal nurse as well. There are many support groups, associations, and online blogs that you might find useful for advice on life with a stoma, and your stomal therapist can recommend the closest ones to you. With intimacy and relationships, it is important that you give yourself plenty of time to recover before tackling any intimacy with a partner. And speaking openly with your partner will be important and will make it as comfortable as possible. There are other ways to be intimate, things like closeness, holding hands and kissing are all great ways to start getting comfortable again. And then once you feel confident, you just may need to experiment to find out what will be comfortable going forward. You do not need to wear a special pouch. However, there are smaller sized pouches or caps available that can be used just for a short period of time if you prefer. For women, if you do plan to become pregnant, you need to speak to your specialist or your GP as they will have the relevant advice for you. For men, getting and maintaining an erection may be more difficult due to the nerves and blood supply involved being bruised or damaged from surgery, and it may improve with time, otherwise it's best to seek advice from your stoma nurse as there are other options to help. The creation of a stoma does involve a physical change to your body, which may in turn affect your own body image. It can potentially be comforting and helpful to talk about any body image worries with friends or family. And speaking with someone who has also gone through surgery for a stoma can be really useful. So like I mentioned on the previous slides, support groups and associations, and there are a lot of online support groups as well. And it's best to talk to your stoma nurse and they can guide you to the ones in your area. If you would like a little bit more information on clothing with a stoma, um, you can refer to our Living with a Stoma guide available on our website or through our customer service. So we don't want to worry you by going too much into potential stoma complications because you may never have any complications in your life and your stoma may be fine, but it is good to just have a bit of an idea of the kind of things that can happen, how to recognise them, and what you need to do if they do happen to you. So the first is sore skin. And this is a pretty easy one to diagnose because you can usually feel it. It's usually going to be sore around your stoma and the skin might be a bit red and inflamed. So this is a really common problem that can be easily treated. A really good skincare routine along with regularly checking your template size and suitability can help really address the following issues. So your pouch might not be the right size. You might have had a change in output for a range of reasons like things like diet or you might be feeling a bit sick. There might have been some trauma to your stoma or the skin. You might have peeled your pouch off too quickly and that's left your skin feeling a little bit sore. You might have a bit of sensitivity to the actual products that you're using, or you might have a little bit of folliculitis going on, which is when the hairs around their stoma, when the follicles get a little bit infected, because we are taking something on and off all the time in the same spot. So really importantly, the two pictures shown here, the top picture shows how we should be cutting our stoma. So not too tight, but making sure there is no skin visible around the stoma for potentially any output to leak onto and cause some sore skin. So it's really important to always measure your pouch at least once a week and check that you are cutting it to the right size if you cut your own pouches. Something else that we need to think about is mucocutaneous separation. And this happens occasionally when the stitches that are holding your bowel to your skin can separate. So that area where the stoma is stitched into your skin, um, it can potentially come apart a little bit. And this is just treated like any other wound with proper wound care and will heal over time. And you absolutely need to go and see your stoma nurse for how to treat this and they will help you and make it easy as possible. Pancaking 
is when the internal layers of the pouch stick together, causing a vacuum, which can prevent output from dropping to the bottom of the pouch. And it can cause a bit of a buildup of output near the stoma, which can block the filter and potentially cause a little bit of leakage. This is a common problem and it can be potentially helped by blowing some air into the pouch before you apply it and applying the filter cover to try and trap some air into the pouch to avoid that vacuum. You could put a little small piece of toilet paper or cotton wool inside the pouch to keep the sides apart. And there are a couple of lubricants um, that can help coat the sides of the pouch and encourage any output to slide down into the bottom of the bag. But again, your stoma nurse can help with all of these issues um, and advise you what might be best for you. Ballooning is almost the opposite of pancaking, where our pouch fills up with wind from your bowel and can cause the pouch to come away from the body. So if there is still ballooning after removing any filter covers, you might have excess wind and this can be addressed by looking at your diet. So like we were talking about before, what kind of foods potentially caused you wind before? They're likely still doing it. It's just that we're having it all contained in the one pouch when normally before our stoma, we didn't have that problem. So talking to your stomal therapist about options for diet and your potential pouches is a really good idea. There are a couple of further stoma complications, things like a parastomal hernia, which is because we've already created a weakness in our abdominal muscle wall to create the stoma in the surgery, we've got this little bit of weakness, which sometimes means your intestines can just bulge out a little bit near that weakness, which causes the bulge like we can see in the photo on the right here, up the top. And this can range in size from a golf ball all the way to the size of a football. It can be surgically repaired, but that is actually a last resort. And most people manage a hernia with appropriate support garments, which are available through your association or your stomal therapist. And they can advise you best on life with a parastomal hernia and how to manage it. You can have a stoma retraction. And this is when your stoma, which is normally poking out from the skin a little bit or quite flush with the skin, when it retracts, so it's below the skin level. And this can actually make it quite difficult to put your pouch on without getting a leak onto the surrounding skin. This can happen due to weight gain or weight loss. It can be due to the way that your stoma was formed, or it can be to the shape of your abdomen. And it's best to discuss with your stomal therapist how to handle a retracted stoma. There can be a little bit of bleeding when you're cleaning your stoma and a little bit of blood is normal whilst you're cleaning your stoma. However, if there's any blood in your output or in your pouch, you need to discuss this with your GP or stomal therapist immediately. You can also have a stoma prolapse, which is when that bowel, your little bit of stoma extends further out from the skin. So similar to a telescope. So this is no cause for concern unless the stoma changes color from that usually pinky red color to a much darker color. If this happens, you need to seek medical attention right away. If you do have a prolapse stoma, it can be help helpful to be lying down when you apply your pouch or wear a support garment to help manage the prolapse as well. But again, with all of these things, it's best to talk to your stomal therapist about how to manage them. So now that we've got the medical part out of the way, let's talk about some fun things like travel. When you travel with a stoma, planning your trip is essential. The best thing to do is make a checklist. Calculate how many pouches you'll use per day and then add a few extras just in case. And if you're going on a plane, keep most of your supplies in your hand luggage, just in case your luggage is lost or delayed at your destination, you don't want to be left without your supplies. Ensure you have adequate travel insurance cover, and this may involve a phone call or a medical questionnaire. If possible, organize seating that is near a toilet, particularly on a long flight. 
Remember International Air Travel Association regulations, things like we can't bring scissors on the plane, we can't bring aerosols onto international flights, and we can't take more than a certain amount of liquids in our carry-on. So if you cut out your pouches before you put them on, you may need to cut them all out before you travel or put your scissors in your um, checked baggage and have a couple cut just for your trip and just for afterwards as well. And maybe if you do use things like aerosol remover spray or aerosol barrier spray, there are wipe versions of these. So you can order some wipes instead of the aerosols and they are absolutely fine to go in your carry-on baggage. When you get to your destination, be wary of the water supplies and be prepared to boil or purchase water. Cleaning your stoma in particular, you need to absolutely make sure that's done with clear water. Changes in climate, water or food can upset, upset your bowels, just like it would before you had a stoma. And as a precaution, having some medication like Imodium ready to go is a really good tip. You need to make sure that we store our pouches safely. So we don't want to get them too warm because that affects the stickiness of the pouch base plates. So it's important to keep them in the coolest, driest place in your accommodation or wherever you're traveling. It's a good idea to contact your stoma nurse before planning and leaving for your trip to ensure that you're prepared with all questions taken care of. And she may have, or they may have some more tips that you might not have thought of yet. So like I just touched on a little bit with our travel, we do need to make sure we store our supplies safely. And this is not just when we travel, this is at home too. So make sure to keep your stoma supplies somewhere easily accessible. You're going to be using them every day or every other day or every couple of days. It needs to be somewhere easy to get to. It helps to have them on a shelf or a cupboard where you can clearly see how much you have. And being able to see your full stock allows you to be on top of ordering your pouches rather than getting stuck with only a few pouches left and you know, waiting on post delays or things like that. Pouches shouldn't be left in your bathroom with a shower or a bath as potentially steam and moisture can affect the adhesion of them. So like we were just talking about with travel, when we don't want them to be, to be kept anywhere too hot, it's the same. We don't want them to be anywhere too humid. So it's best to keep them in a cool, dry place out of direct sunlight. If you have any more questions after watching this video, we do have a range of booklets that have a heap more information. You and your colostomy, you and your ileostomy, and you and your urostomy. These are available via our website or by calling our customer service line directly. Also a wealth of information is your stomal therapist and you should be in contact with them. Even if you have a stoma and you've had a stoma for ages, make sure you stay in contact with them and go for a checkup at least once a year. There are websites for all the stomal therapists listed in Australia and for New Zealand, if you're not sure who your closest one is. The company websites, as I just mentioned, have a wealth of information. Our website is www.ainscorp.com.au and all of the ostomy companies have great customer care, both online and over the phone. So feel free to contact them for more advice as well. Thank you so much for listening to me today. I hope it was helpful.